Welcome to my series, Cakeulator Bakes, where I'll be baking popular cake requests using my cakeulator. And today I'm going to be baking ube coconut chiffon cake. It's three seven inch layers of my hybrid chiffon and it's flavored with ube and coconut, both culturally significant crops from the Philippines and used in many desserts around the world. It's filled with macapuno, which is a sweetened coconut, and it's frosted with a whipped cream cheese frosting. Texture wise, this is what I call my hybrid chiffon, but it's a little easier to explain if I show you my cake tree, which contains all my cakes. It's categorized by texture and my ube chiffon cake lives here. In between a lighter angel cake and a heavier butter cake, these hybrid chiffons are slightly heavier and moister than a very traditional chiffon cake. And I designed them this way so they could withstand being stacked into layer cakes. Of all my cakes, these appeal to those who like a lighter style of cake, including my Thai and Chinese family who prefer cakes usually sold in East Asian bakeries. Flavor wise, you can make this cake one of two ways, plain ube or ube coconut. On the left is the plain ube chiffon and on the right is the ube coconut. Adding coconut ingredients decreases the cake's rise and creates a slightly denser crumb. And I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I think it has to do with the coconut fat, which is saturated mostly and remains somewhat solid at room temperature. I also see this when using butter fat, also solid at room temperature in my chiffons. So in this video, I will make the ube coconut version, but I'll show you where to swap ingredients for the plain ube one. For the cake ingredients, we will need coconut water, non-refined coconut oil. Now in the United States, we usually have two kinds, either refined or unrefined. Refined undergoes various treatments to remove all of the coconut taste and odor. In this case, we do want that. So look for an unrefined coconut oil. Then we'll also need egg yolks and ube extract. And typically I use one of these two brands as they have a rich color and flavor. I'll also need cake flour, cornstarch, white granulated sugar, baking powder, and salts. And for the meringue, I'll need the whites that I took from the egg yolks, cream of tartar, and a smaller portion of sugar. So to make the plain ube version of this cake, you're gonna sub out the coconut water for just regular room temperature water and sub out the coconut oil for a flavorless oil such as vegetable or canola. First important thing to do is to prep the pans. I sprayed a touch of cooking spray at the bottom of the pans to act as a glue for a circle of parchment. And I left the sides untreated because as with all all chiffons, the sides of the pan help the cake reach its maximum height. The batter will stick to the sides as it rises. So to start, we need to prepare the wet and dry ingredients. And my coconut oil is solid at ambient temperatures and it needs to be a liquid to mix properly. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for about 20 seconds until it's clear like this. Then I'm going to add the coconut water, egg yolks, and ube extract and whisk until everything is combined. And the egg yolks are going to emulsify this mixture, but it's really hard to see because of the ube extracts coloring. Now I'm going to prepare the dry. So in a large mixing bowl, I'm gonna place the strainer on top then pour the cake flour, cornstarch, the larger amount of white sugar, baking powder, and add the salt inside the bowl since it doesn't fit into the strainer holes. And then I'm gonna sift everything through and give it a good whisk for 30 seconds to evenly distribute the baking powder. Then I'll make a well inside and pour the ube mixture while whisking the entire time. And this ensures that the batter is smooth. You can see how the flour is getting pulled in little by little and this works well with cake batters that use a liquid oil and once all the ube mixture has been added I'll continue to whisk until I see no more white flour so you see this texture of the batter that's what you want so go ahead and just set that aside for now to another clean bowl I've added my egg whites and now I'll add the cream of tartar so this is an acidic powder that helps the egg white proteins unravel and elongate easier so that they can readily trap more air during the whisking step now I have a small amount of sugar in a separate bowl and I'm going to whisk until the egg whites have trapped air and it looks kind of like sudsy dishwater. And I'm going to start pouring in the sugar, not all at once, but little by little whisking the entire time. And this allows the sugar to dissolve in the water contained in the egg whites and that creates a syrup. But you don't want to add the sugar at the very beginning because you want some bubbles kind of present before you start creating that syrup. So once all the sugar has been added, keep whisking until you reach stiff peaks. So if you see this, this is not stiff enough because when I pull up a peak, 
it kind of falls over. So I'm gonna keep going. Now this will depend on the depth of your bowl and the weight of your attachments, but I know mine is done when I can do this. Boop, the attachments, they kind of like stick in there. A more reliable method is to pull up some of the meringue and it should look like this. We have to fold these into that purple ube batter. But first I'll use a scoop and stir it in to lighten the batter. Now I'm gonna add another scoop and start folding. And so that's pulling batter from the sides and then up and over the middle. And notice how I'm turning the bowl periodically while I do this. Once I see a few streaks of meringue, I'll add another scoop and repeat this step. And I usually get all the meringue done in three to four additions. So this method is important for chiffons and other types of batter that use whipped egg whites because this motion is pretty gentle and reduces the amount of air bubbles that you could potentially pop if you used a mixer or a pretty aggressive stirring method. So use the purple color as an indicator. You're gonna keep folding until you see no streaks of white and all the color is an even purple. Now I'm going to pour the batter into the prepared pans and these go into an oven preheated to 350 for 23 to 28 minutes. My chiffon cakes rise high and then go down a little near the end of the baking time, so watch out for that. The centers will be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or a skewer will come out clean. And as with all chiffon cakes, after they've been out of the oven for about three to five minutes, I invert them onto a wire rack to cool. This allows them to keep their final height. And don't worry, they won't fall out so long as you've prepped the pan as I've instructed in the beginning of the video. Now I only had two pans, so I had to bake my third layer right after the first two. There is about a 25 to 33% decrease in height with this. But if you have a cake batter like this for maximum height, it's it's best to use a batter right after making it. And I like to wrap my cakes while they're still warm. So I removed them all when the pan was slightly cooled down and I will wrap them in plastic. I then set those aside until I'm ready to decorate, sometimes up to a couple days if needed at room temperature. As for the frosting, I made a whipped cream cheese and I have another video dedicated to the science behind this frosting, but it works because the cream cheese has stabilizers in the form of hydrocolloids. Mixed with heavy cream and sugar, it creates a lightened whipped cream cream that I can frost and pipe onto cakes. So to make it, I smoothed out some cold cream cheese and then in another bowl, whipped together heavy whipping cream and powdered sugar. I then folded the whipped cream into the smoothed out cream cheese, at first with a hand blender on low speed and then manually with a spatula. And I let this sit in the fridge for about 30 minutes while I prepped to make the layer cake. Initially, when I planned to make this cake, I was just going to do a whipped cream cheese to fill it, but many bakers on Instagram were telling me to try macapuno, something I had never tried before. So I moseyed on over to my local Filipino market and grabbed a jar. Inside were these translucent slivers of what looked like coconut meat. So macapuno was discovered in the Philippines, and the word is derived from a Filipino term, meaning, quote, tends to fullness, unquote. And that's because the coconuts that make macapuno don't have hollow centers. These coconuts have a genetic defect, rendering the coconuts infertile. But what this does is creates a coconut filled with a jelly center. And once I tasted it, I knew why so many suggested it. It's got this soft and chewy texture that's sweet and has an intense coconut flavor that I knew would be excellent with this cake. To assemble this cake, I laid down the first layer, added one cup of that whipped cream cheese, spread it out, and then created a depressed center with a moat of frosting to hold the macapuno. Then I repeated that one more time and proceeded to do the crumb coat for the cake and then placed everything back in the fridge to set up for a little bit before I did the top coat of frosting for about 30 minutes and for the top coat I then did a nice thick layer of whipped cream cheese frosting along the top and sides of the cake. So for the top I wanted to keep it kind of plain. I colored half of the leftover frosting using ube extract and put half white and half ube flavored frosting into a piping bag then piped three circles around the top perimeter of of the cake. And here's the finalized ube coconut chiffon cake. Beautiful color, my classic chiffon texture, wonderful flavor. Let me know what cake you want to see next.